Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1949, Part 38, 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, February 3rd, 1949. Dearest Mother, Daddy and Bud, it's 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon. I have a 29-cent package of clean, unused typewriter paper. I have my pen and a clear table, and I have until 6 o'clock without anything too pressing to do until I write and state my case to you. Oh, I have ironing and a lesson to prepare and other things, but this is first. But it seems like a miracle to be able to sit down. Mother, Daddy, Bud, I could never be the president. To come right down to it, Ruthie is so swamped with just what she's doing. I've reached my capacity. I don't imagine you'd like to hear about it, and I don't care to go over it either. But here's what Tuesday, as an example, was like. 7.30 up and 8 o'clock, John drove me to 55th Street, walked five blocks to A.G. Bell. 8.30 in the nursery till 12 o'clock. Back to the clinic on 112th Street, where at 1 o'clock Mrs. Davis outlined the lesson for me to teach the next day. Then to Hitchcock Hall to see Dr. Robinson about evaluating credits for my teaching certificate. Back to see Dr. Gardner, home until 5.30 when Joe drove me to 33rd Street for art class. At 7.30 we left and went downtown, first to the library for the book, then drove me back up to 112th, the clinic for lip reading class from 8 o'clock to 9.30. Walked home and John arrived home too, to find only one supper left for the two of us, of us which we divided. Then I had ironing to do, whence I'd washed till midnight Monday night. This is supposed to be my holiday. I can just, just see when they add classes on top of all this. I was sick over the weekend, and that's where I lost time, as I just don't have time to be sick. Last Thursday, we had a square dance and really enjoyed it. Even had John square dancing, too. We drove to the other house Friday to address 500 invitations to their open house and our anniversary. When I came home, I began typing out 80 copies of lesson plans for Saturday morning. I planned to work all night if necessary, but about 12.30 began to heave, all through the night. It was absolutely the worst I've ever been in my life, except maybe before my last operation. About 8 o'clock, I began typing again, plink, plunk, and dying all the while. John came to investigate who was plinking away so early and promised to take it in if I ever finished. Lottie, Mary, and Dell all began typing for me and I fell back into bed. About 11.30, John suggested that since I had <clears throat> the whole house in an upheaval doing my homework, four typewriters pounding away, I'd better phone and see if the clinic was still open. I did, and they said they'd wait five minutes more, so John sped down with them, and Ruth faded out. The kids were wonderful. Wayne, Dick, Shintu, Gloria, Bill, John, Dell all visited me. Dick brought me two big bottles of ginger ale, and Esther asked what the party was for, and Dick said they were all admirers of red-headed Ruth. I had orders to be well by evening, as John's cousin and his wife drove up from Marion, Ohio. We played poker. John, Harold, Marge, and I, S Sunday Bridge. John has told me I should learn to play, but I don't feel too confident. Sunday night I went babysitting, and John came over to drive me home after he briefed some law cases at law school. We had our first real snow Saturday, and I liked the weather. Nice. Nice cold snow, but not too blizzardy. The streets are very dirty, though, though, so much traffic. They tell me that I have enough practice teaching, but I'll probably, probably have a lot of other stuff to take. 
Years from now, I'll still be working on it. If I had to do it over again, I think the best bet would have been to have gone to Saskatchewan University after the first year in Florida with the money I saved. But then Mom wouldn't have got to Florida and a lot of other things. I still wish Bud were going to Saskatoon, but although I'd like him here, university is too darn expensive. My fees are $500 a year as compared with $150 in Saskatoon. But if I live, it'll work out. Teaching mornings, though, cases in the afternoon, and classes evenings and Saturdays doesn't leave enough study, washing and ironing time. I had an offer to teach in Detroit today. When Dean Robinson was going over my papers, he said to his secretary, We're going over Miss Smallshaw's sagas, as if I'd been jumping helter and skelter. But being defensive about it, as Dick said last night, Interesting, though. I got very cross one morning when he was being particularly deliberate eating breakfast. I said he was a typical bachelor, and just like my father. I haven't heard the end of it. I'm so tired. I taught a 30-year-old deaf woman yesterday on the new speech audiometer, and in the evening a girl in her 20s gave speech correction and will be using the new sound mirror, which produces visually how the speech sounds. I teach tomorrow afternoon, too. Life. Dick drove me to class, waited and drove me to get a hamburger and chocolate after. Was I ever glad, though, as one deaf fellow has been waiting after class, and Mrs. Davis told me not to be seen talking to him as he has a bad reputation. I've always said I was busy as he's already asked me to have a Coke. Apparently he's already been to seven psychiatrists. Lum invited Joe for supper tonight, which makes it awkward for me, but anyway... I won't be able to go to art class anymore as I'm taking psychology those evenings and John Ray will be driving me home as his law classes are out just about a half hour before. Anyway, tonight Joe is getting a boyfriend of his to take Mary, one of the girls, out with us tonight. I hope it's okay as after tonight I don't plan on going out with him again or probably won't have the time to. I'm just making time because Mary's been so swell and wants to meet some fellows, and that's the best I can do. Lately, everyone's been advising that I take out citizenship papers as the first requirement of Ohio teaching certificate, and then in the event of depression, which has been mentioned a lot lately. Since I've been here, the whole picture seems to have changed. Last fall, jobs galore, and now mail help wanted is very slow. The engineers are all only working five days a week, John and Wayne, and architects too, Lum, as the contracts are being canceled. They say January and February are slump seasons, though. Forgive me, dear, but I've got to lie down. Write to me. Love, Ruthie. P.S. I've reread this, and driving seems to be the main work, but honestly, in Cleveland, it's a mighty big item. Hours on a streetcar and 18 cents a trip on the bus. The taxi is $2 to town. Terrible about Regina's streetcars. R.S. P.S. 2. We went to see the movie Joan of Arc downtown and lunch after. I cried all the way through off and on. Bill asked Joe if he could come along too, so he did. Mary said she liked Joe better than his boyfriend. The movie was good. Love, Ruthie. Western Reserve University, 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, February 12, 1949. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, Thank you, darling, for the very sweet Valentine for daughter. I just, I just opened it up as I came and showed it to John and Dick, and I was very thrilled about it. Honey, don't pay too much attention to any one letter of mine, as I do go up and down from one day to another. The overall trend is happy. I wouldn't change anything. I appreciate all you've done for me, really I do, but it's just my nature to see other things no matter how perfect people are. So forgive me. 
Right now, I just wish more than anything that Buddy were really as happy as I, and I know he will be. The best part about difficult times in life is that after you've experienced some unhappiness, then you're able to face other things with a far-sighted attitude. I've come to the conclusion, which is commonly known, yet for me to realize it personally is like, new, is like a new discovery. It's not always where you are, but what you are, and that you can make surroundings a lot more pleasant by a positive attitude. Buddy dear, take advantage of every moment you're at home so that when you eventually eventually leave, you won't have to look back as I have to and wish you'd been more lovable to the people you really love most. I had a very good morning class at 9 o'clock. Interviewed parents at 10 and taught 15 to 18-year-old lip reading class at 11. Been alone in the nursery this week. Mrs. Lewis is sick. We're having an Indian supper tonight and talk after, and then John's taking me to a play at the Hannah Theater downtown. Oh, mistress mine. I think with Sylvia Sidney, then to a college Valentine dance. John's been so swell, waiting for me at night downtown to drive me home and has asked me not to take on such a heavy load this summer so that I'll have, quote, some free time. He's making it his last holiday until he passes the bar exams. Dennis's mother had Miss Bender and I for supper last night. Wonderful meal, and showed moving pictures of Dennis as a baby. Really enjoyed it. I plan to finish the illustrations this afternoon. It's a beautiful day, and I love you all very, very much. Ruthie, Western Reserve University, Cleveland, Ohio. February 13th, 1948. Mother Darling, the resolutions I make to send greetings and remembrances on time are to no avail. I hope Buddy and Daddy are better. It seems as though my very minutes are budgeted, and for every one thing I do, two are left undone. After I mailed the stockings yesterday and did some of the illustrations, My room and living room were a must to be cleaned. By that time, after a shower, our Indian supper was ready. Curry, rice, and potatoes, but seasoned almost beyond recognition. It was so hot and I just don't go in for that. Within five minutes, a couple of kids noticed me, and I looked up to see John with a startled look, and Dale as my guest looking surprised. And as a body, the whole other table turned to look at Ruthie, which made me blush more. From the shower and the hot food, apparently, I was very flushed, as only you and I can get. Afterwards, I asked the Indian couple to talk about their ideas on India, social work, and it proved very successful, although I had to leave before they were through, as John, Wayne, Anne, and I went to Oh Mistress Mine a play with Sylvia Sidney and John Loder. Amusing. And after, we went to the college dance. Of course, I enjoyed that. John Ray doesn't dance as well as Don or Bill, but he's tall, and I, and I enjoy dancing. Sunday school, and one of my little four-year-olds brought me a valentine. The church was 740 ministers short. Has Bud ever considered being a minister? He'd be wonderful with young people. Good math teacher, too. Then I got people helping me make name tags, you remember. John took me down to the open house. He gave a short talk about our house and was really wonderful. Real proud of him. We just got home and I'm going babysitting and he's coming to drive me home after he briefs some more cases. It was an interesting afternoon. Al and Mike told me I looked beautiful and wonderful, respectively. I said thanks, but didn't believe it. I wore my black velvet dress and hair back in the black velvet bow and felt nice. Miss Bender and Miss An- Mrs. Anderson came, and Bunny and her husband, Ted, and John and I showed them around. Bill left when John began to talk, and just came in now and said he's sorry, but he can't help it if he likes me. Wish you could have been here. I love you, Ruthie. The Deschler Wallach, Columbus 15, Ohio, number 1569, February 19, 1949. 
Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, I just can't wait another split second to tell you about the last two marvelous days. As a matter of fact, since I've come back at Christmas, life has seemed to be so very right and really coming to a climax of just what I want. A week ago Sunday, Miss Bender gave me the outline of Little Black Sambo to illustrate, and, well, you know, you know how so very busy I am, I can't begin to get caught up. But anyway, I drew in meetings, and when Dennis's mother had Miss Bender and I for dinner, I drew a little more, and finally settled, settled to painting Wednesday night. I painted until 6 o'clock a.m., and still only one-third finished. On an inspiration, I suggested to Mrs. Heinrich the possibility of coming to Columbus for the convention. She said, Okay, but I'd be Dr. Pay. It's interesting how that didn't matter to me. Mrs. Davis said, Okay, good to, and closed my cases as long as I got someone to teach my speech lesson and lip-reading class Saturday morning, and I could stay in her hotel room. Miss Bender had planned to go by train, but called early Thursday morning that I could ride with her, if ready by 4.30, as she'd decided to drive. It was a rush trying to get ready and work on the book, and no sleep. I slept from the time we left Cleveland till we arrived in Columbus, minus time for dinner. We got here about 10 and proceeded to paint until 4 o'clock a.m., Miss Bender let me sleep in, so I missed the morning program, but finished the book by noon. Miss Bender kept chuckling about how soundly I sleep. She says I sleep all over like a baby. But it was worth it. Miss Bender's demonstration was wonderful. Terry, two years, five months, was simply adorable, and lip-reading and speech without being audience-conscious at all. Just amazing. And the other kitties, too. Mr. Fortune told them about my book and how I'd stayed up all night, and Miss Bender used it in her demonstration, and then Mrs. Davis saw that it was passed through the audience. Everyone's been so nice about it. Whether or not they're just being sweet is hard to say. But at dinner last night at the Miramar Hotel, very elite, a woman came across and said that she wanted to tell me how charming were my illustrations and everyone has been telling me they like them. So, then when I went into the meeting today, late with Shirley, they announced who I was. Miss Cuthbert, head of special education, said, Here's a perfectly lovely young teacher. Who's first? And Miss Bender said, I saw her first. And Mrs. Heinrich said, Possession is of the law. And they again mentioned my book. Later, Miss Cuthbert said, now don't you leave Ohio. I've had some lovely meals at lovely places, expensive too. This has all been naturally very, very nice. I don't pin too much on it, but Miss Bender is very confident of getting the series published, and then I would be on top of the world. It is amazing how things that I, that I really want come along. Even if they don't, it's worth it and I can see so much more improvement needed in my artwork than ever before. It's been a very inspiring two days. We've been over to the university and oh, but I hope Bud can get into one of so many interesting fields. There are so many new things to be done. Audiometry, so much. I feel like I've just begun to grow into deaf work after thinking of it as a side to my art interests. And these people think the way I do, or vice versa. A demonstration class where the parents have done the work in conjunction with the teachers was especially inspiring. The best deaf speech I've ever heard, four- and five-year-olds. Everyone's just left, and I'm going to catch a bus shortly to go to Marion, Ohio, about 40 miles from here. I have John's grandmother's phone number to call when I get there, and John, Wayne, and possibly Dave and Gloria should be there if they left Cleveland at noon. We're going to a dance tonight and go back to Cleveland tomorrow. I hope to have a good time. It's been so good so far. Being with Miss Bender and Mrs. Davis was really nice. I had a bad experience Monday. I went to sign my contract and they said no, I wasn't an American citizen. 
Only that or intent pledged before 1950 would be okay. I felt tears rolling down all the way back to school. I couldn't study or anything, so finally I told Mr. Fortune, and he called Mr. Heinrichs. She'd, al she'd already told them to find a loophole. They went to the executive secretary to the superintendent and found in the code not yet published that since I was a citizen of a friendly country, it was okay. Glad of that. I had imagined very dramatically saying, I won't be going to school tomorrow, John. Mother, I am completely sold on Ohio and opportunities here. I had a very, very crabby letter from Wade, and I'm so glad I left Florida. I met Mrs. Murray from Florida, now in Detroit, and she said, Where's your ring? She said she was glad because some of the teachers hadn't thought Wade could make me happy. John sent me a little valentine. I know I'm not your first love, but I'd like to be your last. I'll send it to you. I love you, and I am so very grateful for life. Love, Ruthie. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.